Hello, today I'll be explaining how my SKR encoding works. The main idea here is that we want to encode information by using a sequence of items, but we'll be doing it in a way where we don't use the same item twice. There's two counterintuitive details that make this different from normal encoding methods. The first is that a given item's value will change based on what items came before it in the sequence. So, for example, it could be where if we had an emerald followed by a diamond, the diamond would encode a 3. But if it were lapis followed by a diamond, the diamond would represent a 4. The second detail is that even the number of bits an item encodes will change, but only based on how far it is into the sequence. It may seem as though these are the same conditions, but in the latter it only matters how many items came before it. So in our example with the diamond, the number of bits it encodes doesn't change because there's still the same number of items before it. These details may seem like they would just make things harder, and it does make the redstone more difficult, but they also make it possible to repeat numbers without repeating items. It actually turns out that both of these are fairly easy to work around when making the redstone. On the other hand, if the number of bits were to depend on which items came before, that would make things very difficult. Now let's go through an example. Here we have our item pool, and we'll assign numbers to each item. Remember though that these won't necessarily be the numbers they encode, but rather their starting values. You'll also notice that our number of items isn't a power of 2, so we'll just ignore the final few for now. And we'll see that we have enough items to encode 4 bits. Let's say our first 4 bits are 0011, or 3. We may as well pull the item out entirely, as we don't want to use it again. Now we will see that first detail in action. All the items to the right have their number decreased to fill in the gap. You'll also notice that the iron ingot became available. Now that we have all 16 values available again, we can pick another number. We then repeat this process up until we no longer have 16 items left. This is where that second detail comes into play. We can simply do what we did at the beginning by reducing our options down to a power of 2 again. Which means that now we'll only be encoding 3 bits per item. With both of these in play, we can continue for as long as we want. But I'm actually going to cut it short here. As you can probably tell, the further we go, each item encodes less information, so it's a good idea to stop before the rewards are too small. All that's left to do now is clear out the pool, and we have 48 bits, with a corresponding sequence of 15 items without repetition. This becomes much more powerful the more we scale it up, though. And bundles allow us to do exactly that, as they can hold up to 64 unique items. In fact, they are so good at this that you don't even need to use the whole thing to encode 256 bits. And just a reminder that this is per bundle, which can be put into shulker boxes.